Let's take a look at the visual experience in art. The first question we wanna ask ourselves is what is art? What does art mean to you as an art student? Most people would answer that it's about the artwork and people, the artists that make art and the places where you can go see art. And artists make art. Viewers visit the galleries and museums. And teachers like me, well, I talk about art. And students like you study it. So you gotta ask yourself, what is an artwork? And what sets it apart from other objects? Some key terms to remember are like medium and subject. Medium in the art world is not a size between small and large. Medium in the art world means the materials such as oil or watercolor or whatever you use to create the work of art or a category of art such as drawing, painting, or sculpture. That's medium. Subject are the things that are represented in an artwork such as people, buildings, and trees. That's your subject. On Monday, your subject was the hand. On Tuesday, your subject was a shoe. Some more terms to keep in mind. The word traditional says having a familiar and recognizable form, style, and subject matter. It's traditional. It's something that's passed along to generations, even in art. Abstract does not resemble things you see in real life. Abstract is, was mastered by Spanish painter Pablo Picasso. And we will make some abstract artworks, especially with the use of line. Another key term is pop art. Pop is short for popular. It was an art movement in the 1960s that used images of popular culture to comment on American society and values. One of the most famous pop artists of all time was an American artist by the name of Andy Warhol. He used to paint Coca-Cola bottles, Campbell's soup cans, et cetera, et cetera. We will study Andy Warhol later, later on during the semester. Check out this work. This is a very traditional work called the Artist Studio. It's an oil painting, oil on canvas. Canvas is a fabric that artists use to paint on. And it was painted by Pierre Sublieras. Art within art, right? What about this work? This is called op art, not pop art, but op art. And op stands for optical by Joseph Albers. This is called Homage to the Square Globe, painted in the 1960s. This is from 1966, acrylic on fiberboard. Check out this pop artwork. This is by Roy Lichtenstein, and it's called Wham! 1963, magna acrylic and oil on canvas. If you wanted to see this with your own eyes, you'd have to travel across the pond, as we say, all the way to London, England at the Tate Galleries. This is one of the very first artists who portrayed comic strip scenes as fine art. And what about clothing? Can clothing also be used as a work of art? In this case, the artist Joseph Baez presented felt suit in 1970 by simply using felt, wood, and wire. And this was displayed at the Art Institute of Chicago. And what about architecture? Can architecture also be considered art? You bet. In this case, in St. Louis, Missouri, you have this work by Louise or Louis Sullivan, the Wainwright Building, an artistic marvel in architecture. Now take a look at this briefcase. Take a good look at this briefcase. That is not a briefcase at all. Well, it is as it's presented, but in reality, it is a sculpture this briefcase that was sculpted in 1985 was made or sculpted out of clay and mixed media. In other words, it was hand built, but it was constructed by hand to look exactly like a briefcase and then painted in a way 
to fool the eye to make you think it was a real thing. This is by Marilyn Levine. Again, briefcase from the, the mid-1980s. And then we get to Lesco, France. These works here are some of the examples from the prehistoric times. Some people believe these artworks were made by men, prehistoric men, who basically drew what they were hoping to see outside of the cave in which they created these works of art. In other words, if you were a hunter, you were hoping that you would draw this and then outside the cave, like magic, suddenly an animal would become a reality and the hunter could then hunt. Some also believe it's just simple doc documentation of a great day out in the wilderness. Now check out this work. This is by Cristo and Jean-Claude. It's called Wrapped Coast, 1 million square feet. Cristo and Jean-Claude were very, very unique artists in that they didn't necessarily make anything, but rather what they did was cover things with fabric. Like in this case, this wrapped coast is, well, wrapped with white fabric. And they would cover it completely and then take a photograph of it. That was their work of art. This mixed me media piece by Robert Rauschenberg is called Monogram. And it was made in 1959. I said it's mixed media because mixed media means that the artist used several different mediums or media to produce this work. It's a very unique work and you will find this artwork in most art history or art appreciation books. In summary, usually the word art makes people think of artworks, museums and galleries. Art, however, is also people, the artists, the viewers, art historians, archaeologists, teachers and students like you. And you have learned that today's art comes in a variety of forms. Most of this variety came in the 20th century. Before that, paintings and sculpture were the only objects people thought of as art. But today, the idea of what art is can be has broadened. Everyday objects from the past and from other cultures are now considered art. And the objective of the visual experience is to introduce you to some of the rich variety of today's art, a world of objects, places, and people for you to see, wonder about, and enjoy. Now let's make some art. <laughs>